you already been subscribed Right, right now, the queen, she on live right Please pull over the whip, no phone in when you drive uh. Dope soul, sporting with the talk uh. First lady from New York, New York Brooklyn. All my people, you rocking with the chat Hit that. The like button would tell me where you at uh. You know, step from the NBK Born and raised up NBK Hey, hey, real lady, where she holding it down No matter way how you feel, she, she gon' greet, greet you with a smile Salute, Nick family. Welcome to the Just Nick and It Weekly Show. I'm your host, Stephanie, a.k.a. Queen. We'll review the week. We'll talk about Mitchell Robinson returning. We'll talk about the Knicks in third place. We'll talk about McBride. We talk about McBride every week. But every week, it seems like he's getting better and better or having better and better performances. So we'll talk about him tonight and his ceiling and whether or not the Knicks, what will the Knicks need to do to remain in the third spot? The rest of the season, and then I'm gonna fix my lights. See what's going on over here. Hello, fellas. How are you? Fantastic. That's the queen. Always a pleasure to be here with you, Jeff. Uh, talking yeah. Knicks. And shout out to Jarrell who couldn't be here tonight. Yep. Shout out to Jarrell and Staffa. Feel Staffa. better. Hopefully, he's feeling good. I'll say that. I won't say feel better better because I'm not sure, but hopefully, everything is going well with him. He'll probably come all in later and be on for 45 minutes. Talking about Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, talking about Mitch you know, more than Mitch played in the game. <laughs> you, know how, you, know how, you know how to get him on. Say something, say something bad about Mitch. Right. What are you talking about? He just came back. What you expect? <laughs> That's what we're gonna do to get to get staff on the um to get staff on the show. Um salute D Block, Walter White. I appreciate you joining us. Oh man! All right, let, let let's start with the usual question. And uh, uh, then Mitchell Robinson came back. I'm super excited about the Knicks being in third place, but I don't want to. I don't want to mess up the flow. So, who and what stood out for you this past? Seemed like we just asked this question Monday. <laughs> it was did. Monday. Okay, but a few things have happened. Only a couple days ago. Yeah. 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 On the Queen's Court. On the Queen's uh, Court. Well, Queen, again, and, and shout out Stafford to you. Says, he, yeah, he is sick. He is sick. He he text, is sick. Get it right. He is sick. Feel better, Stafford. <laughs> Feel, Feel better, better Stafford. For sure. Yes. Shout out to the chat, and you know, and, and thanks for hanging out with us on, on the week. You know, this week is a different day, but, you know, people showing up and, and giving us the support. So uh, we appreciate that. And don't forget to hit the like button. Definitely. Um, yeah, so um, what stood out is definitely again the whole, the whole team, Queen. The whole team is everybody's playing great. Everybody's hitting their stride at the right time. Everybody's doing, you know, everybody's playing their role, and you know, and that includes the coaching staff. And and you know, Tom Thibodeau, he's, you know, if if there was a if there was an award for most improved coach. Uh, I would say Tom Thibodeau would probably uh, should probably be nominated for it because he's yeah. he's doing a lot of different things that he hasn't done in his lengthy career as head coach. You know what I'm saying? So he's changed. He adjusted to the game the way the game is now, the way the NBA function now, the way the rules are. He's doing a lot of uh, a lot of that, and all you know a lot of automatic rotation. He's not doing that. He's doing a lot of things that we've complained about. That he wasn't doing in the past, so he's doing every. I tell you, he watched the show, you know, on the down on the, you, you know, he checked the show out. So he he's taking he's taking his his uh, little hints from us. Let, let's um, see if this continues when he has his entire roster together. Well, we'll see. I mean, and and you know, of course, you know, the two things that happen uh, is uh, uh, Dante Dante Divincenzo breaking the uh, the the three point per in a game record uh, set by Evan Fournier, who 
really tried to defend really hard to not let that happen, but it happened anyway because he really, he really played defense on on uh, Divincenzo that day to prevent him from breaking his record. But that happened anyway. Mm -hmm. And of course, Duke, Deuce McBride, who's been going off, and I, you know, I think people are wondering like, is can, is this even sustainable because he's playing so well and he's and, and not just on offense but on defense, he's really doing all the little things um, that a good NBA player does. So, you know, those two guys stood out. Of course, uh, um, um, Isaiah Hartenstein, he's obviously getting back into shape. He's playing very well. You know, everybody's chipping in. Everybody, everybody's chipping in. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go too deep because we're going to go. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm trying to hold back here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff, and then I'll say something briefly and then we'll get right into it. Well, how about a shout out to Josh Hart, the triple double machine? Yeah. Like he was like six since January first. He never had one in his life before then. I don't think so. You know, from from that standpoint, that I mean, you know, although I, I I in fun I was I was poking at him last night. All of our starters in double figures. He's sitting there at seven, but then I couldn't get too mad because it's like three for five from the field, which is good for him. But but right. you know everybody else was was lighting it up, but. You know, I, I guess what 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 stands out to me is that we're you know big ups to us for beating up on the junior varsity, but you know the teams that we played this week were really really bad. So I you know as as excited as we are, you know on Twitter everybody's like, like ECF and all this stuff. Like let's you know let's pump the brakes just a little bit. We beat the Pistons and we beat the Raptors without like six of their starters or, you know, so six of their best players. So it's, you know, and they were bad and we did what we were supposed to do. And we looked like the best offense in the history of, you know, I think I saw somewhere that that was the most points we'd scored in a regulation game since November of 1980. Wow. You know, I I was five years old last time they scored that many in regulation. So, wow. uh, you know, that, that, that's a big deal, but at the same time, I think, you know, we're going on the road to San Antonio, which I think that better be another one of these games where we just take care of business. But then the last 10 or last nine, I guess, are tough. We got a lot of tough games in there. We play Milwaukee. We played Boston. We played Chicago three times. We got Miami in there. So um, we got to go over the have, schedule, actually. You know, and so you're going to have your metal tested a lot more. Um, I actually kind of think that, and I don't know, maybe we're, I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, but I also I actually think that maybe they're saving OG for one of those tougher matchups. Like, like I think, you know, I, and maybe even Randall, because I, I kind of think like they thought they could get by in those games with just who they had. Mm -hmm. And so there wasn't really a need to like push the press the issue, you know. But like if it had been, in, for instance, if it was like a game six elimination playoff game or something like that, I think both of those guys would have been out there. I think that's where at the point where they're at in their rehab. So um, but. And I know we're going to talk about it later, but really nice to see Mitchell Robinson back on the floor for me. I mean, that, that's my guy and Hartenstein and he, man, when he gets back in shape, having those two for 48 minutes, other teams don't want to be seeing that. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. All right, Jeff. That's the end. Okay. You went out and you came back in. My bad. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. Shout out to Jalen Brunson. 26 points in 27 minutes or something like that the other night. Just make it look easy. Like, he gets Very 26 fun. and it's just like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, Very like an fun. afterthought. So Shout out to Tiz for taking him out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, you know, it's it's funny because Ajay said that about Tibbs, but in a lot of ways, I think this is what Tibbs teams do. Like, if you notice, since the Knicks have – since he's been with the Knicks, they've had a pattern. Kind of first 20, 25 games or so, they kind of hit or miss. They do whatever. It's kind of the feeling out period. But then once the trade deadline is over, they tend to really pick up steam and play their best ball. And it just seems like the defense – solidifies i don't know what it is about the 50 games or 60 games in but it, even in the season where we uh 
where where we didn't make the playoffs when we only won 37 games, even right. with all the injuries, those last 10 games, we played really well over that stretch. And 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 we, you know, after the Derrick Rose trade a couple in the we here season, 20 games. Yeah. And yeah. so here we are again. Mm-hmm. And, we can leave that for we have a, a a segment that we can actually get into right now um about the Knicks being in um third place and then we could talk more about historically um how the Knicks finish because that's gonna be you know um fall right into what we need to do to finish um you know to finish down the stretch. I'm back and forth with where to you know to with with where to go next but um yeah, let's talk about the Eastern Conference. Then we'll get back to Mitchell Robinson. We'll get back to um, McBride and 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 some other some other things. Your thoughts on the Knicks being in um, third place, given the injuries, um, given the roster turnover. Remember, there's there's been two trades. You know, so it's not just dealing with injuries, but also, you know, um, acclimating new players to the roster. Even though OG just fit in um seamlessly so we are a half game ahead of cleveland who's number four and we're one and a half games um ahead of orlando who's fifth if the season ended today we play indiana because they're the sixth seed right now and if the season went um ended the day, the Bucks would play the winner of Miami and Philadelphia, who both would be in the play-in. How the tides have turned, uh, I, I tell you. Um, yeah, so let's let's talk about you know what's you know just your thoughts on the Knicks being in third place, you know, given the injuries. Um, I, I'll 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 start. I'll say it's impressive. <laughs> I mean, there's no way around it. It is just impressive. Um, and I, I know Adjay is not going to like this, but I just think of Tom Thibodeau. <laughs> I just think of, you know, to be able to, everybody on that team has bought in to what the Knicks are doing. Even if they win, like we were four and eight in February. I didn't get a sense from the effort from the team that anybody was wavering. Anybody, you know, was no longer buying in. Everybody bought in next man up, next man up. And I was really waiting for this team to gel. I'm like, okay, we didn't have the new players for a while. Now, like, how long is it going to take to kind of re-gel, you know, after, you know, Brunson and, um, excuse me, not Brunson, OG and um, who's, and Randall. And Randall. Right. Um, and we're doing that. Now, I agree with Jeff. We can't get super excited about the teams we just beat, but I'm just talking about the totality of the season. And with the injuries, um, I was out for a long time. Mitchell Robinson, lo- lo- I think it was like 49 games or something like that. Um, um Randall is coming up on 30 games or, you know, it's like, that's a significant chunk of time. OG and Anobi, as much as we talk about him, he's only played in what, 17 games or something like that for the Knicks. Yeah. You know, and for us to do that is because guys step it up, you know, we'll talk about what Hart has done to help fill in the void, what McBride is doing to help fill in, um, to fill in the void. Um, Players just stepping up when Sims, when Isaiah Hartenstein couldn't, you know, was hobbling a little bit. Sims got more minutes, you know, and say what you want to say about what his ceiling is. He gave us what he had during the time that he was in there. And that's all you can really ask. He plays his role um, to, you know, to a T. So I'm super excited. I'll get you you two thoughts and then we'll talk about other than injury. What do we need to do to finish in the third spot? And then I'll also go over, you know, the um, and also to win f- 500 games. And, and I'll go over the schedule once you guys um, finish. But, Ajay, your thoughts on the Knicks just being able to battle it out and, and at this point anyway, be in the third seed? Uh, well, first of all, two things. Well, not so first and second of all. First, So I, I have no problem giving Tibbs credit. I give credit where credit is due. 
Um, he has done a tremendous job this year. And even the um, unorthodox things that he's done, like like he, he did st stuff that don't really make basketball sense, but it worked. That's like, you know, like a, a mad scientist kind of move. Case in point, you know, he put Deuce in the starting lineup when OG went down. So he replaced he he replaced uh he put the smallest guy on the team to rep you know you know what I'm saying like to replace the the power one I mean the small forward it worked so that's not that's not a move I think any other coach would have done but he obviously he knew what he was doing because it kept on working you know what I'm saying so it's not it it's not that you know, it was a lucky shot. It's just kept on working. So he knows what he was doing. Um, and second thing, Queen, I'm super excited about beating them teams that we're supposed to beat mm -hmm. because in the win-loss column, it goes as a win. I don't care if I beat Boston or if I beat uh, Detroit. It's a win. It counts as a win. So I'm super excited. If we if we had lost those quote-unquote trap game, I would have been furious. So mm -hmm. on the other end, I'm very happy that we beat those teams. Whether we're supposed to beat them or not, every every time we win, I'm very happy. I don't care who the team is. I don't care if we play a G League team. If we beat them, it's a dub. Um, but you could be happy, AJ. No, I'm, but but people are, you know, are we going to the Eastern Conference Finals because we got two wins, thirty point win? Like that's a different level. I, I'm I'm happy about the win, but I'm not reading a lot into it. I'm, you know, I, okay. But I'm super excited we beat them. Okay. Okay. I don't care. I don't care. Hey, listen, they're professional basketball players. But you're missing a point. No, I'm not missing a point. I know what you're saying. That's what you're saying. That's fine. You I get what you're saying. Excited, but I'm not like people are like on Twitter, like, oh, we're going to the Eastern. Co I mean, if we're going to the Eastern Conference Finals, it's not going to be because we beat up on Detroit and Toronto. Yeah. And for those people, listen, we have the next 10 games is going to be a real test for us. Um, you know, because we're we're playing some some high level teams in terms of record. All right. Um, what was the question again, Queen? I forgot. Just your thoughts on the Knicks overall. Oh, in the in the third, in the third. injury, like all of that talking, and you didn't even answer the the, the question. No, I did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 I'm filling in for Jarrell today. I'm doing Jarrell's part. I'm talking Jarrell's part. Um. Jarrell's minutes. Um, no, I'm listen. I'm super excited. Like, and I hope we stay uh, uh, in in third seed. Um, and it shows the the success of this team. It's climbing and climbing and climbing. You know. Um, and you mentioned. I think part of your question is like, but I, well, I don't know if you want to talk about that later. How how this team, you know, and Tom Thibodeau team, they gel and they play better towards yeah, the end of the season. About, yeah, this is the and, type, yeah. This is and so. Even the season we missed the playoffs, we balled out the last few games of the season. So I expect I don't expect anything different this time around. I think we're gonna we're gonna surprise some people with the the last ten games of the season. Um, I expect us to have a winning record. I don't know if it's gonna be six four, you know, or seven three or eight two or whatever it is, but we're definitely gonna come out of it. Uh, I count it five. I, um, let me let me tell. So we have ten games. Right. Mm -hmm. Away, home, away, home. Then we got four away and two at home. So our home games are against OKC, Sacramento, Brooklyn, and Chicago. Right? Sh we are Chicago twice. At home, Chicago once. R right. We, we played, played Chicago twice. three times, twice on the road. Right. Twice right. on the this road. Just, or, this is home. OKC, Sacramento, Brooklyn, Chicago. Yeah. Away, these are the arenas we have to go into. San Antonio, when just beat Phoenix, San Antonio, Miami, Chicago, Milwaukee, Chicago again, and Boston. And if, if Randall and OG is, is not in, the team is going to have to put in work. We're going to continue, the guys are going to continue to have to step up and fill those shoes. Um, as best they can. I don't think San Antonio is a cakewalk. I don't think my, Miami is injured um, 
means nothing. But Miami, you know, is injured. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good it's it's gonna be a good test. It's gonna be a good oh. test, and I expect us to come right. out with a winning record. Be it six four seven three, I don't know. We're gonna be we're gonna be we'll do better than five hundred in those last five games. Okay, all right, Jeff. So first of all, to to your point, I think think about this: if we go three and seven in our last ten, we tie last year's win total. Right. That's crazy when you consider how much how many injuries we've sustained and the big trades that we've made and all of that 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 chaos that we've gone through to 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 stay the course the way that we have speaks a lot and i i I think the one thing that is encouraging to me is we had to put guys in positions where they weren't comfortable where they were had to do more than they 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 normally would because guess what when playoff time comes that's what we're asking of you to do something more than you normally would. Maybe yeah. that's just playing in your role, but it's still a step up. So if you just play your role at the same level as you did in the regular season, it's probably not going to be as good, right? right? So you need to step up a little bit higher. And a lot of these guys, whether it be Hart or Deuce or I Heart or, you know, uh, the list is pretty extensive. Of Even Jalen Brunson, I think, has done more than even we thought he could do. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who's carried the load. I mean, he gets blitzed, he gets double teamed, he gets triple teamed, he gets this, he gets that, and he gets 27 points and you can't stop him like in 25 minutes. It's like no big deal. Like it's it's no sweat. I It's one of the finest in-season performances I've ever seen, uh, especially from a Nick. I mean, the guy is just – you know, he's completely different because he's so small, but it reminds me of Patrick Ewing. And when Ewing was at his peak, we were in every game that he played. It didn't matter what else was going on around him. If Jalen is playing, I feel like we have a chance to win. And that's just what what was really nice about the Detroit game is I didn't think he played particularly well. And we still really ran ran away with it which which is a really good sign because sometimes even your best player is is going to have a bad night and that includes the playoffs right nobody is perfect nobody plays outstanding every single night so you you have to have other guys step up and all these guys are being put in roles different roles and and they're succeeding in those roles so so that gives coach Thibodeau more trust in them to do more things and to and to to be more versatile and 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 that just helps the team and and so yeah i so we have to go 3 and 7 to get to to 47 which was last year's total but even in february when we were <laughs> really decimated we went 4 and 8 which you know is is right at that number and i and i kind of think we're going to play better than that and you know, I tend to lean on the pessimistic side just because of my PTSD with this team. But 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 I kind of agree with that, Jay. I think we're going to go five and five, six and four, somewhere in there just because of who we are. I think that's kind of, you know, we have this DNA where we treat every game like a playoff game. And we don't always go out and play great, but we always – it seems like every game we have that intensity level where, where we treat it like a playoff game. And that's how you beat a team, an unserious team like Toronto, by 45 points in their own building because you take it seriously. I mean, uh, you know, I think that's a weakness of Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't think they took Charlotte seriously. It was the second time they played them, and they just thought, well, we're going to, you know, just walk in there. And I, I think they did that when Brunson went down when we played them too. You know, so so I think that's a characteristic or a trait of a, of a good team that and, – and not many teams do this. I mean, the L.A. Clippers, you know, they just – I, they just think they have a switch they can turn on in the playoffs and they're going to have their load management and this, that, and the third. That's not these Knicks, man. It doesn't matter who you put in there. They're going to, they're going to fight for every inch of, 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 of uh, battlefield that they can get every yeah. night. Right. What do you think to finish in the third spot? I mean, for me, it doesn't matter, but I know for some of you, it matters so we can avoid um, Boston. I, I'll take Boston and wh- wherever we get them. So the, the semifinals or the finals, it, it doesn't make a difference to me. I think the way this Eastern Conference is, anybody can beat anybody. 
you know, I mean, there's some some matchups I would be surprised if it were, you know, it were to happen. But if Milwaukee, who plays the the winner of the Philly Miami series, if Miami, uh, you know, beats Philly and then beats Milwaukee, who, I'm not surprised. You know, I I think it's um, I think it's it's closer than we think it's going to be um, in the playoffs. My hope is that Indiana and Orlando, being that this is their first time in the playoffs, um, that is too much for them. <laughs> you know, that's what I hope, particularly if the Knicks match up with with Indiana, um, Indiana at six. But in terms of what we need to do to maintain, if we don't get OG, if we don't get OG and, and, and Randall back, which I, I would hope we would, at least five games left um, in the season, in order to maintain every night, there has to be a, a star. There has to be somebody in support of Brunson because we know Brunson is going to show up every night. There's, we're going to need two or three people that's going to sh- that has to show up big for the Knicks, and not just against the two teams that we played, but against these tough teams we're going to play. If we're gonna if we're gonna do that, like Bogdanovich only played eighteen minutes. He had six, I believe it was sixteen. Um, you know, 16 points. I don't expect him to score 16 points every, you know, every game. But my point is, in order for us to get six out of these next 10 wins, guys are going to have to show up big in support of Brunson. Can't be any bad nights, um, quite frankly. Maybe one person can have a bad night. <laughs> but that's about um, that's about it. So that's what I think would need to happen. Guys are going to have to really play out of their minds. Anybody um, else? Not I was going to say the, the Frank, toughest Frank. part. Mm-hmm. The toughest part about the next ten games, okay, is not just the opponent and you know that the fact that we play, you know, I think six game on the road. You said, but then aside from Brooklyn, everybody else is playing for something. All the other teams are playing for something. Either try to get out of the play in into the playoffs or get into the play in like it or, or 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 okc try to get to the top spot um oh, it will uh i'm sorry not well two because san antonio i don't i, I don't know where san antonio is uh they're, they're, they're eliminated they're eliminated but they okay, have so, Yama, so they could yeah, right. that guy can win a game by himself he's so but, good. but you but you're right aj san antonio is gonna play um hard because they won like two straight or something like that mm-hmm. Or two out of their last three, but two in a row. You're right. We, we beat them in 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 you know in New York. Like for a team that's not going into the playoffs, they're not a team that's going to lo- lay down. They're going to be like, oh, okay, you know. And and the all remember the the, the, the storylines about Wimby looked overmatched and this that and the other. He, he gonna be ready to play. <laughs> he gonna be ready to play. So he'll he'll play for that, and you know Sacramento. We went in there and and we won that close one. They're gonna be pumped and ready. So I, other than Brooklyn, I don't see anybody else who we're gonna catch sleeping. Well, Brooklyn, I mean, we we they, you know they're gonna because we we beat them three times already. They don't want to get swept, so they're gonna come out fighting. They do. They so go. you know everybody's playing for something. Um, but we're still gonna come out with a winning record though. Okay. So the last five games can be kind of crazy though, too. Like, so I don't know this for a fact, but Boston is locked into the top seed. And yeah. so they may decide to rest four starters that night. You I'm not saying that they will, but mm-hmm. they could. You know what I mean? They could, you know, we don't know if they're gonna give us their I mean, they may give us their best shot, but but they may decide, okay, we're gonna rest holiday and Chris stops this mm-hmm. game or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, you don't know about that. And 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 so we play Chicago three times. If they're pretty well locked in to the 10th spot, they may do something similar, right? The last five games can be real funny like that. And 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 it's kind of weird, but you if if Embiid comes back healthy just in time for the playoffs, it may be better to avoid the second seed just for because you might not want to play Philly in that first round with a healthy Embiid all of a sudden, right? right? That that could be that could end up actually being a worse matchup than being even a three or a four. So, you know, it, it's weird how all of that stuff 
can can shake out. I'm not saying that for sure. And I, you know, I'd love to hang on to the third seed for sure, because I, I do think the later that you play Boston, the the better off you're going to be. And if we can, but again, we're, we're still gonna have to win a first round series and worry about the second round when the second round gets here. I'm not, I'm not one of those who looks too far ahead. Like let's, you know, let's focus on today because we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but um. Yeah. So I, I just think that 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 we don't. What looks like it's going to be impossible or really difficult could turn into not as bad. And and you, we have three games against Chicago, but Chicago's not like an amazing team. I mean, they're still below five hundred. They've played better of late. You know, in the second half, they got off to a really slow start. I admit all that, but it's not like, you know, it, it's not. They're fighting for something to beat them three times in a week. Or two in, in 10 games. I mean, listen, none of these games are a gimme. It's the yeah. NBA, though. Then these this NBA, there's very few gimmies. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we played Detroit three times. The first few times we beat them by a total of eight points. So, and and that would be one of the gimmiest games you would think on the schedule because they have they have the worst record in the league. You know, mm-hmm. Washington has looked like a gimme most of the season. They won three out of their last four games. So, you know, it's not, you know, as, as Ajay always says, they're, they're pro players. They have, they can, you know, somebody's going to step up. Not everybody's, and, you know, not everybody's going to have their worst night every night. I mean, the Spurs, when they beat the Suns, they didn't even have Wembenyama. Right. He was out that game and they beat the Suns. And then the Suns go into Denver and they beat Denver like two nights later. Mm. So anything can happen, man. Anything yeah. can happen on any given night. But but that's where I think Thibodeau comes into play, and that's where I have confidence that we'll finish at least about 500 is because we don't have the roller coaster, typically, knock on wood, but we don't usually have the roller coaster of effort, right? We, we usually have a, 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 a standard of competence or, or, or a baseline that we come out in every game with. Now, we may only have four rotation players, you know, healthy or whatever, but but even in those games when we were severely undermanned, like the Warriors game at, at the Garden comes to mind, you know, we were in that game. You know, we had no business probably being in that game, but we were right there, you know, and, and we very rarely get blown out and we very rarely have a stretch where we go, two and eight or, 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 or something like that, even when things are, are at their words. So that, to me, that gives me confidence. Jeff, right. it ain't, it ain't going to be 500, man. The next 10, it's going to be at least six and four. We got to hit that 50 mark, man. It's not going to be 500, bro. Right. Sign me up. AJ, six, sign and me four, up. six and four, seven and three. I, you know, sign me up. I'm winning, ready. Winning record. The next 10 mm-hmm. games. We shall see. Um, I I can see it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Like I said, if, if they're gonna win fifty, guys are gonna have to step up. Period. Can't be no inconsistent um, play. Brunson needs help. You know, um, and it may be a different guy each night. But if we're gonna get fifty games, that's what we're gonna need. It may be the same guy each night, and we're gonna talk about him in a minute. But it may yeah. be the same guy each night. Right. Right. Exactly. That's what we're going to need. Um, Cleveland, you know, Cleveland is, you know, you know, they're three and seven over their last 10 games. Donovan Mitchell is out. I'm not sure. For, he's supposed to come back Friday, though. He's supposed to come back Friday? That's what I heard. All right. But the point is, we're only a half game up, so we got to handle business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> we're going to have to handle business. Cleveland is not, you know going to lay down. Orlando is not going to lay down. We're going to have to handle business and we're shorthanded. Guys are going to have to continue to show up the way they've been showing up. And we ain't talking about against Detroit and OKC. I mean, excuse me, Detroit and 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 Toronto. They're going to have to show up the same way <laughs> against Miami, Milwaukee, Boston, Chicago three times, OKC, Sacramento, and Brooklyn. We'll get a chance to see a little bit more of what this team is made of. And it's, it's kind of exciting. Like, you know, um, look, given this season, even if we didn't win, and I mean, 
I would say if we ended with 45 wins, I don't want to say if we went 0-10 going into the playoffs. I don't want that. But coming in, if somebody said, listen, Randall is going to miss this many games. Mitch is going to be this many. You know, you're going to trade for OG. He's only going to play 17 games. And you guys are going to still win 45 games um, and have a top six seed in the, in the um, Eastern Conference. I think we all would have signed up for it. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And, and yeah. we're going to um, win more than that. And I think what comes out of this week, too, is that we're like five games, four or five games ahead of seventh with with 10 to play. That's massive. Like one of the one of the big, uh, big things was for me, at least with all the injuries was avoid the play and avoid the play and avoid the play. Now, you know, we haven't clinched yet, but but the odds, I think, are really good that we're going to avoid the play. And and frankly, if we can get healthy, I don't really care. I would prefer to start at home in the garden, but if anywhere from three through six, I think we could definitely win win the first round series, whether we're at home or not. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I agree. Not Snipes Entertainment. You, you, you want the third seed? It's kind of connected. I don't know if we're gonna win like forty seven games. And, and 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 clinch the third seed. It's possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is gonna be nip 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 and tuck all the way through. You're right. You you're gonna have to um, and remember you lose games, Orlando's right at our heels and they have the tiebreaker. Like that's yeah. one of the things it's like we're a full game ahead of Cleveland because we 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 have yeah, the tiebreaker right. with Cleveland. So right. so they have to finish better than us in order to in order to get a better seed than us. But both Orlando and Indiana, who are behind us, if they end up tied with, they just have to get pull even with us, and they get the higher seed. So that that's that's a disadvantage in each one of those cases. So we we need to keep that cushion, and the only way to do that take care of business against uh, San Antonio, and then hopefully come back healthy and 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 have a war with OKC. I would love to see us at full strength against the Thunder. That would be that would be a great game. I don't know what y'all talking about. I keep telling y'all we're gonna win at least six of the next ten. Y'all keep talking about but we were, it's, it's, it's book it. Okay. At at least at least six of the next tens, ten games. Okay. We still have to have a show. It's like six out of ten. We out of here. It's, it's, it's all settled. I mean, it's <laughs> got a black tie affair. He's got to get to. He's like six and four. We gone. We're done. <laughs> Why are we still spending so much time talking about it? It's done. <laughs> As they came back from the future, he knows. He's been, you've been working on that DeLorean, hadn't you? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> That is that is funny. All right, flux capacitor and full working, uh, <laughs> fully working. If the Knicks won fifty games and finished in the third spot, is Tom Thibodeau now in the conversation with the Minnesota coach, with the um, OKC coach, and some people may even throw in um, the Orlando coach? Has he moved up? You know. Um, in the coach of the year rankings, if the Knicks finish third and with 50 wins? That's a great question. I would Chad, say what you think, chat, let us know. Coach of the year, in the like right now, people he may not even be in the top five. I think so. But he may not be in the top five. But if we win 50 games, where, where do you think? Top three? I think top three. I don't think anybody's winning over the OKC coach. What he's done with that young roster and the way that SGA is playing. Look, I love Coach Tibbs, but I would give it to the OKC coach hands down. I think the way that that team has has competed in the Western Conference has been phenomenal. And Minnesota's coach has done a good job, too. I mean, Cat's been down for, for a long time, and, and that ship has stayed afloat. I don't know if that's an indictment of Towns as much mm -hmm. as it is. Like, did you see all the Anthony Edwards, all those pivots he did the other night on that poor boy in Detroit? He, he pivoted like 11 times in a row in the paint and then put it in. I was like, whoa, he thinks he's Jalen Brunson out there. Mm -hmm. It was nice. A AJ, your, your, your thoughts? Uh oh. 
Oh, now he you? don't want to talk about Tibbs. Oh, okay. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yes. I think he's not going to win coach of the year because, like Jeff mentioned, you have other coaches who've done amazing. I mean, he, what Thibodeau's done is nothing short of amazing, especially when with all the injuries and all the the uh, the the adversity we 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 we've had this year, that he's had to manage and juggle and you know play players that would not play or players that some people think don't even belong in NBA and uh, you know and so on and so forth. He he's done a he's done at very one time at, at, at one time. time. <laughs> so no, he he's done a yeah he I think he should definitely be. Uh, one of the top three or top four coaches to be considered for a coach of the year. I don't think he'll get it, especially he's already won it twice. So I, I really don't think that's going to happen. But they definitely gonna um, yeah, he definitely should be should be considered. That's that's yeah. what I said earlier. If if there was such a thing as most improved coach, he should probably win it because he's he's changed a lot of the the you know he's gotten rid of a lot of the habits uh, that we've complained about. Uh, him over the years i think some of it is out of necessity and this remains to be seen i mean if you're talking about the roster it remains to be seen if that will continue in the playoffs right. i like tom thibodeau but he can get a little bit like linus and kind of reach to what he you know what's comfortable to him you know um when there are other options it's like he he's like i'm in the trenches now who can i trust this guy oh, he only been playing with, for me for three months. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. So we'll see. Hopefully that does um, continue in the playoffs. But I wanted to say a shout out to, to Nick's live, Julian, Julian Blum. I don't know if the voters, and we talked about this for defensive play of the year, all these other awards. I don't think they get too deep with it. You know, oh, well, Coach Tibbs, you know, look what he was able to do with less, you know, and then I'm going to put him against, you know, the OKC coach. Who we, I don't think they like OKC. Wow. Shay, look what how Shay's raised his game. They've come out of nowhere. Top three in the seat. At one time, they were top one coach of the year. <laughs> so I hear you, Nick's live, but I don't think they're they're, they're um. Even if they think this, I don't think it's enough to move the needle. Heck, they might give it to Boston just because it's the Celtics. You never know. <laughs> they did that with the sixth man of the year last year. Anyway, so we know it's possible. Tibbs is doing more with less. He gets his third. You putting money on that, Nick Yak? I mean, I like Tibbs, but I ain't putting money on that. But Queen, I mean, uh, go, going back to something you said, Queen, like the people who are voting. I mean, it, it's you know, can the NBA find a better way to do that? You know, th these people they really don't, the pe they don't know what they're voting. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Candace Parker has a vote. <laughs> I mean, th th think about that. <laughs> she doesn't know. Like, I, I, I'm not even sure these people watch. They probably watch the games that they broadcast like on the night they work they watch those games they don't sit there and watch those games they don't know what's going on in the NBA you know what I'm saying so I, I don't know man I, it, it kind of sucks but that that these people are the one making the decision right oh hold on I knew something was was out of whack <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy me a cup of coffee <laughs> <laughs> go to the website and buy me a cup of coffee thank you for all the cups of coffee i got as i head out to miami tomorrow i will be thinking of you when i am buying my seltzer water in my in um yeah she got that cuban coffee from miami you know <laughs> i'm not a coffee drinker but yeah i did i have heard about that uh, monarch smart tv tibbs winning coach of the year this year we he make every player on his team play at a high potential. Tibbs coach of the year at third seed with an injury roster. Who's going to get it over him? I think the Minnesota coach and the OKC coach will get more votes, votes than him. I think so, too. 
and and probably the Boston Celtics coach because you got to remember this is is this this is his second year as a coach, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you know he's you know by far the best team, or at least the team with the best record by far in the league. That's tremendous. Yeah, I can't. I, I you know, yeah, I can't argue with you. I I just think he'll get in the conversation. <laughs> you know, if, if if we win fifty games and, and get to the third seat, but I agree. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't see him winning. Um, I would be shocked. But I'd much rather win some playoff series than have him win Coach of the Year and go out in the first round. I don't really. I don't really care about that. Like I. 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 I want to. I. I I like the accolades for the players just fine, but the only thing that matters to me is playoff wins. The rest of that, we could have zero all NBA guys, zero all stars. If we go to the Eastern conference finals, that's, that's much better to me than any, any of that other hardware. And I think that's true of our players too, by the way. Mm, of course they would prefer that, but you can't tell me that they, they don't also want all-star accolades and MVP and all NBA um, accolades. I think they do. I don't think they want it above championships, but you can't tell me Jalen Brunson didn't want to be an all star this year. That's true. He wanted. He wanted. He wanted that because it's set. It's it's a, it's like a stamp. Like you know what you're doing, but you know when others recognize it, you know it it means a lot. If if Tibbs get it, it might help him get more money in, on on his uh, contract. <laughs> oh, he's getting a big he getting a big deal. He's he in tight with the GM. He, he and Rose are tied together. They both getting a big payday this offseason. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about McBride um and some other players on this. Um I don't have Eddie Kofi. I don't have any update on OG. I heard Tibbs say, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, reports that the elbow is still inflamed or and they're waiting for it to calm down <laughs> that's that's all i've heard so i'm not sure when he's well i and, i mean that's og and before we jump into the other stuff what about randall yeah randall has like been in this and there was reports that his that he stalled in terms of like moving moving along in treatment not necessarily a setback but i would think just not moving along as quickly as they thought he would I think with Randall, they know that they're on borrowed time with him. Like they know that there's a high probability that he's going to need surgery, but he wants to play and they want him to play. So I think they're playing this, you know, somebody used the Russian roulette and analogy. You know what I mean? There's one bullet in the chamber that's going to finish his season. How many times you want to, you know, spin that revolver to find out. And I think they're trying to wait as long as they can before they take that first shot. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's kind of the situation with him. And and with OG, I don't I I heard the same thing as you, Queen. I think that if they, I think if they needed him to play like absolutely one hundred percent, he could probably go, but but they're like, well, if it's aggravated, it, let's just give it as much of a chance to rest as we can. And and I think I agree with Jabroni. I would be, I would not be surprised if we see him on Sunday. Listen, I picked up OG on the waiver wire, put him on my on my IL <laughs> and fantasy basketball. So if he comes back Sunday, I might win my league. You there know? you go. <laughs> Hear that, OG? You better get moving. Put that put that in bubbles wrap if you got to. Queen okay. needs to win the league now. Let's go. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's talk about McBride before we get into Mitchell Robinson. We talk about him every week, um, but then every week he shows us a little something else, right? Um, and five games as a starter, 21.6 points, 3.8 assists, 0 0.4 turnovers, and 4.6 made three-pointers per game. 55% from the floor, 48 point, not basically 49% from downtown, downtown, and 91.7% um, from the free throw strike. 29 points and nine three pointers against um, Toronto. Um, and he, I think he's one of maybe six Knicks, if I'm not mistaken, 
five or six Knicks who have scored um, nine three pointers in a game. I thought he was going to break. I thought he was going to break. Wouldn't that have been something if it, if Devin Chenzo's record lasted one game? That would have been crazy. And, yeah. and yeah, he's a, right. he's and he's playing like forty minutes a game during that whole stretch. Like they they can't take him off the floor. It's phenomenal. But I, I'll tell you what, on this season, he's shooting 42% from long range. So I'm starting to feel like that three-point shot, I think that the sample be- size is getting big enough that it might be real, you know, that it, it might be there to stay. And, you know, I think it's funny because the, the Detroit trade has been such a disaster for both sides that the best thing to come out of it is that it gave Deuce the opportunity and he's right. just run with it. Right. I mean – He's really just stepped up his game, and I don't want to turn this into a, a, no, a him versus Grimes. You know, I don't think that's fair. But but what I'm saying is, when he's gotten the opportunity, he just goes with it, and he just he's not afraid of anything. He's not afraid of the moment. He trusts the work that he puts in. He knows that he works as hard or harder than anybody on the team, and he has full confidence in himself. And he's starting to look like the player that we saw at West Virginia. I remember watching him in college. He was a lights out shooter from long range and he had good range too. It wasn't just like, you know, some three point shooters in college, they're only making them because the line is shorter. That wasn't the case with him. And the other thing about his threes, it's not like it's just those wide open uncontested corner threes. He's making some tough threes too, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and even, and, and I've been on the, he's not a point guard drone for two years with this kid, but even that facet of his game has improved improving yeah. quite a bit. I mean, 3.6 assists versus point. He hardly knock on wood, but he hardly ever turns the ball over. Like he just doesn't. I mean, it's, it's really phenomenal. I think, I don't think he turned it over at all in the Toronto game. And I think he had one in the Detroit game. So look, if you've got a guy who's going to take care of the ball, and I mean, it's night and day difference between the player that we saw in the playoffs last year. You know what I mean? And it just playoffs seems like the beginning of the season. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. But, but my point is, is, this is a guy who you can envision being in the playoffs. Like, I don't think at the beginning of the year, if you had given me a multiple choice question, you can have the following player in your playoff rotation A, Boyan Bogdanovich, B, Alec Burks, C, Deuce McBride and D Quentin Grimes. There's no way I was picking answer C, right. but right now I don't think it's even a question that I'm taking pick C. Right, Deuce. That's how good he's been. I mean, to average 21 points a game as a starter, small sample size, but I mean, you want to talk about? You keep saying somebody's got to step up in these next games, and he's been the guy to do it. I mean, he's filled the role incredibly well. Yeah, beyond yeah. anything, and, and you said it, every week he just well, he, we can't say anything else about Deuce, and then well, we got to say something else about him because he keeps he does it even better the next week, you know, and and so what a revelation he went from why did we sign him to that extension to that's the best contract in the league in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely no, no, yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> listen, listen. When he wasn't playing well, he wasn't. I was the first to say, this guy is not playing well. You know, I'm mean, talking seasons, not necessarily this season. You know, Deuce McBride is somebody who plays really good defense, but he's not shooting the ball well and he's not running a team. So I, as everybody was excited, I was not excited. I didn't I wasn't getting excited over someone who's coming in and giving her spot defensive minutes. But now I. As you can tell, I'm somebody I got to see it first. <laughs> you know, I got to see it before I'm like, okay, yeah. And I'm seeing it in McBride. And you're right, Jeff. His ability now to, his vision is getting better. You know, he's not like a super playmaker that's going to play you, you know, into a basket. But his vision is better now in terms of seeing guys on the, you know, on the three-point line. Um, you know, driving and, and 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 kicking, so you could tell his awareness is getting better. And like he even said, things are slowing down for him. You know, things are slowing down for him. And that shot, the confidence in it, he's as confident in that shot looks as good at those as his other ones look bad when he was shooting like twenty something percent. 
like it's it's like night and and day and you know big energy pointed this out last last week shout out to him he's a floor spacer now absolutely he's a floor spacer now so you know um kudos to him um ajay and i'll ask this question what and jeff you can answer it as well do you think he's raising his ceiling in the NBA? I know it's kind of early, but I'm asking anyway. And do you think his ceiling is now a starting NBA point guard, or do you feel like you need to see some more longer sample size? Huh. <laughs> he's definitely raising his ceiling. But for some reason, <clears throat> the teams we play, they don't like their scout, the scouting department have it caught up to the the deuce thing yet because they keep leaving him open i mean this guy he is he's it's at at the point now where like you expect the shot to go in every time he lets it go and it's been going in most of the time every time he lets it go Mm -hmm. but for some reason other teams are they doubling on everybody else they 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 leaving him open or is it that they're leaving it open or he's creating the space he's making himself open i don't know but some way. Oh, and by the way, he does need a lot of space to to get that shot off. He could have a defender, a bigger, tall. Most def, most people who defend him are bigger and taller. They're right up on him. He gets it off anyway, and he nothing but net. He swishes it. So he's definitely raising his ceiling. And you, you gotta tip your hat off to the front office and the coaching staff because we we all here talking about. Grimes and IQ and 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 those young guys who seem that they could have a bright future in the NBA, mm-hmm. but meanwhile the Knicks front office and coaching staff, they believed in Deuce all along, so they knew something we didn't. So we over here talking crap, but then they 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 had that in their back pocket, and now they letting it loose. Um, hopefully he can sustain it, and hopefully absolutely hoping that that shows uh that shows up in the playoffs um but definitely he's raised his ceiling and and um i don't know like in terms of starting point guard i'm not even gonna think about it because he's not gonna be a starting point guard in the nba because he's playing behind jalen brunson but he's a starting guard because he's next though i mean he can go on the house (laughs) on the next i mean he is you know he's under contract for the next uh couple of years um but you know what he has started when when brunson's out he starts so you know he he started a couple of games uh for can i ask years. a question sure the way that he and brunson have looked together if one of og or randall is not back in time for the playoffs do you consider starting him at the two and moving DiVincenzo over to the three and Hart or if one of those two guys is is if Randall or OG is healthy putting them at the four or maybe just you know if, if obviously they're both out then he'll probably still start but but right. what we've seen the chemistry that we've seen that Deuce next to, to Brunson works pretty well and I think you can make the case that it works better than it w- looked when it was Grimes and and uh and and Brunson early in the season. So would you consider if one of those one of our of OG and Randall isn't back, do you consider keeping Deuce in the starting lineup? I, I can I answer that? I yes. think for and, and you're talking about for the playoffs, right? Yes. I think it depends on who we who we playing, like who's the matchup is, what team we're playing. It, so if if we're playing a team uh, I mean, what are the what, what, so I think in so now it's either gonna be I mean right now the way the way it is right now we would be playing Indiana. Um, Nesmith, Nesmith, Nesmith. I, I would probably keep him in the starting lineup. But you because you could then have Brunson guard Nesmith, and you could just put yeah, Deuce on on Halliburton. Have Deuce on Halliburton. Halliburton's longer though. No, nah, I, I wouldn't. I, I I wouldn't do it. I, I I think, and it's not even about his his um game. 
I'm not putting a young, well, I mean, he's confident enough. So I guess you wouldn't have to worry about his confidence. But to me, a three guard lineup in the playoffs, I mean, we went to work to kind of get some more size. <laughs> you know, I would like us to use it. We're not even doing that now. We're playing four guards basically in Hartenstein. You know, um, it's working for us, but it's not something I would do. And I don't think it's about the size. It's, it's about the lack of experience. I don't know if I would want to start the playoffs. Um, th that would be um, that would be for me. Um, <clears throat> X productions. People keep saying Deuce is a point guard because he's short, but he's a two guard. This is what I will say. He has a better shot, st shot, shot starting in the NBA as a point guard learning how to run a team than he is as an undersized two guard starting. I think you got to be lights out. Like how he's playing right now would have to be his norm for a team to forget about his lack of height and start him at the two guard. If he's going to start, if we're talking about starting coming off the bench, fine, fine. But if he's going to ever start in this league, I don't see him starting at a, as a two guard at that size unless he just becomes 50, 40, 90 all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. With, with that size, I think he's going to have to learn how to run a team and he's getting better at it. And he's getting better at it. Anybody else have any comments on that? Unless he becomes I see this a lot in the, um, in the chat. Go ahead. No, I was going to say he, he, he become a slash brother in New York, him and DiVincenzo. The, the Knicks the Knicks version of the Splash Brothers, um, I, I Queen I, I think yeah. The, uh, have it, can you think of any other shooting guard that small who have started uh, in the NBA who? I, I'm sure, not, not uh, Iverson. Not not. <laughs> but, but I uh, yeah I guess he did play the two, because you had Snow playing the point. Um, or Dumars. Uh, Dumars. The, yeah. How tall is McCollum? Is McCollum? Oh, no. probably like six two. He's short though. No, CJ McCollum. Oh, oh, you mean you're talking about the uh, Pacers, McCollum? No, CJ. CJ is CJ is like six six five or something. Really? Yeah. I thought. Well, can somebody look it up? I thought they were talking uh, when he played with what's his name about CJ's playing. Not, not, yeah, two small guards when they were in Portland. Nah, two mm -hmm. shooting guards. CJ's tall. He's a big guard. Um, Ramrock, absolutely. I'm here for all the McBride smoke. He was not a good player at that time, period, point blank. I didn't care what he did in the G League. In the NBA, it was not translating. And I said he couldn't shoot because he wasn't shooting. You know, sometimes it trans, most of the times it translates, sometimes it doesn't. You know, sometimes it doesn't. So I commented on where McBride was at the time. But one thing about me, I'm not going to hold on to a narrative once it changes. He's shooting very well right now. And he's helping, and he's helping the team. But back to our regularly scheduled um, programming. What is that? What were you saying, um, Ajay? No, no. I think uh, the, the, some people pointed out that CJ is oh, six three. Oh, he's six three. Yeah, I know he wasn't super tall, but he's taller than. Uh, yeah, I, I thought he, he he looks like he looks at least six four yeah. out there. So I don't know. Ran rocked and missed a few shows because if you've been listening, I've been talking about McBride. You know, he he was not good at that time. And Deuce is small, but his wingspan is not short. So he's got a yeah. long, he's got a good wingspan. So he can guard, he can guard twos just fine. He can even guard some threes. And he puts great ball pressure on, and he's, he's not afraid to take on the challenge of the other team's best defender. I don't want him on Jason Tatum or someone like that. But, you know, he's short, but he holds his own on the defensive end despite his lack of size. And he's able to get his own shot off, too. So, I mean, you know, if he can do those two things, like how much of his how much is a size a detriment if he's doing those two things is my question. As a coming off the bench, not at all starting, I think he would have to 
what he's doing right now, he would have to show it. This would have to be him for people to consider starting him at, at two is, is what I, this is, that's my opinion on it. He would have to be lights out at that size. You got to be lights out. Um, if, if not, you know, if not in, in shooting and scoring, like you have to be so dynamic to make up for your lack of size to start at the um, two guard, in my opinion. But off the bench as a two, perhaps, yeah. Sure. Um, he's not starting with Dante here. I don't see it. Once OG comes back, he's not um, starting. Nick Yak McBride will end up a star by the end of the playoffs if he has any games like he's been playing. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, but even if he doesn't, he could still help us. You know, he doesn't have, if, he, if he's like this every single game, hell yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take it. But if he's not, he still helps us. You know, I, I don't think we have to go into the, um, we have to put that pressure on him. You know, that, that this is what we need. This is a, this will be his first time getting significant minutes in the playoffs. Whatever he gives us is good. I have no smoke for Deuce McBride, no matter how he plays in the um, in the playoffs. The Hawks beat Boston. Okay, again, like Deuce will be sixty five, forty five, ninety five. Okay, if he's sixty five, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's funny. Anything that's else funny. on um? Um, on Deuce before we move on to um, to Mitchell Robinson. You know I want to get to Mitchell Robinson. We before Mitch, uh, the 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 Milwaukee Bucks lost, so we're we, we're like we gained like half a game on them. <laughs> we're, we're coming. I think uh, yeah, maybe a game and a half back of two. Yeah, we are. We have a game in hand with Milwaukee. You win that game, and of course they yeah, have the tie. One whole so game. Ooh, getting tighter, getting closer. Take care of business, Knickerbockers. Tomorrow, let's go. Mm -hmm. The Knicks wind up in second place. Tom Thibodeau is coach of the year. Queen, <laughs> Queen doing backflip. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, you wanted to say anything else before we move on to Mitch? Let's go to Mitch. All right, let's move on to Mitch. Played last night. At, what was it? 12 minutes, 13 minutes, eight points. What was it? Three rebounds, two blocks, if I'm not. Um, eight, two, and two. Eight points, two rebounds, two blocks? I think so. It might right. have been three. All right. How did he look to you, Jeff? Ajay, how did he look to you? He looked good. I thought he was a little out of shape, but that's kind of to be expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but that one block shot where he just kind of – it looked like he just took it from him. I was like, wait, wait what? <laughs> like, he just was like, thank you. <laughs> and then I could what? I, I just think that, that that elevates our second unit so much to have an intimidator like that on the court. Uh, you know, and I think when his when his uh, rebounding offensive rebounding gets a little bit, his rebounding gets back in step. Like I didn't think he rebounded particularly well um, when he was in there. I don't. He wasn't terrible, but you know, he was really elite before the injury. So I, I think that's what's sticking out in my mind, both offensively and defensively. So I definitely want to see that tick up. But but I just think for that second unit to have him in there. I think that's a game changer. He's so dynamic. He he's just he's everywhere and and you know those second unit players don't know what to do. I mean, you just you have to think twice before you go in there and then it just opens things up and and what I really want to say is that he and Precious defensively looks like a powerhouse mm -hmm. because Precious is so switchable and so so live at the four spot and then you have so it just makes that painted area just locked down, covered, 
and you could even get away with uh, with uh, Bogdanovich or yes. you know somebody who doesn't who doesn't guard that when you have those two in there and one other look with with him healthy we can have three plus defenders on the floor at all times and that that makes a huge difference that makes a huge yeah. difference i mean we're already a fantastic defense but i think it 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 brings us up mm-hmm. another notch and and just i think it's going to be so good for for hartenstein actually because it, that way he doesn't have to push that minutes restriction that he's at that level that ceiling you know he's got i think tibbs is about got him he can have him for like 28 minutes right now because that's about what he's playing and right. i don't think he's allowed to i don't think the doctors are letting him push him beyond that right. and so well that gives you 12 to 14 minutes you know okay well that's the perfect slot to, to put robinson in there and and then you just have that rim protection and that offensive rebounding and that that uh that defensive uh talent and intensity in a way that and and precious has been fantastic he just can't do that th- sort of thing from the five but it slots him into the it's more natural position at the four yeah. which which is phenomenal and if you have Hart, achua and robinson on the floor at the same time i don't know if you'll ever score any points but the other team's not scoring any points either yeah um yeah with precious and mitch you bet the other three players have to be scorers on the floor Though, though the other three guys have to be, um, or 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 shoot or just shooters because those guys they can clean up, <laughs> you know those two guys they can so man, yeah. you know they got to be shooters they don't have to you know you, you got you got a pretty good rebounding between those two, uh, Mitch Mitch looked good to me, um, Jeff I don't hey, he didn't seem so out of shape to me though you know he didn't play a lot of minutes I thought he was pretty good he he appeared to be out of sync and that's when the chemistry mm-hmm. comes in that's when you you know you want him to play the you know, eight, 10 games before the playoffs because he, like, you know, the passes, like, there's a couple of passes he he wasn't expecting, then they dropped. I mean, he was able to recover and, and slammed anyway, but you could tell he's not in sync with those guys because he really haven't played with those guys that much. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's almost like you you put the new element in the whole mix in the formula. So, it, it, it you know, it, it, it's, it's a... Uh, like I said, the coaching staff, they're doing a good job. They didn't bring him in, you know, have him play 28 minutes. They give him like a right. like a little something, 12 minutes. Let, let him get his chemistry going with those guys before he starts playing big minutes. So, no, he, he, he looked good. He looked good. And he didn't fall. He wasn't falling all over the place. He didn't, you know, so I was, uh, <laughs> so it was, it was good to see Mitch out there. Listen, having... Mitch and and I heart for us going into the playoffs is going to be huge. Whoever starts, whoever comes off the bench is going to be huge. My y'all know my take on Mitchell Robinson, but that's more the offseason. You know, if the Knicks have to if the Knicks have to choose one. But right now for the rest of the season, having both Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartenstein on our team, the flexibility, the roster is already flexible. We're getting more and more flexible as we bring guys back. Even last year, Tibbs was using iHeart and Mitch. One would play more minutes one game. Another would play another more minutes the other game, depending on the flow of the game. So we have that back now, you know, depending on the game, depending on the series. And we have 48 minutes of rebounding, shot blocking, and defense now offensively the knicks are gonna they they played with mitchell robinson last year and we still had i mean it was a different type of team and the offense was structured a little different but i think if you just have one player who's not great on the offensive end they should be able to make it work for the time that um for the time that he's in there Adia, you were going to say something? I was going to say, uh, you probably get a later on. I know we're going to talk about that. Just, you know, let's make a little note. We got to talk about who's dropping out of rotation. I mean, that's. I think it's Burks. Burks, wasn't he? I mean, he's sick, no, no. but. No, we know Burks is dropping out, but we still, we, that still leaves us with, with too many guys. If you know, because you guys think Tibbs is going to go with an eight, nine man rotation. I say 10 men. <laughs> and you guys don't agree with me. Like, who, who's, who's sitting? Bogey's on his way out the door as we speak, brother. 
his minutes keep dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. I don't know if they were ever even up there, though. I was always surprised that he played under 20 minutes. I'm just saying, when everybody's healthy, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Bogey get a bunch of DNPs. I mean, the only good game he's had shooting from deep was against the Hornets team that, I mean, the Raptors team that couldn't guard it. Anybody. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're going to flamethrow against the Raptors. The game, though. He did, but I mean, I, even in those games, he didn't shoot the ball that well from deep, though. I mean, a couple of those 20-point games, he was one for six from the from three, I think. You know, I, I think he did have one game like that, that where he shot well from deep, but he hasn't been a really good long distance threat for us and look i think there are lineups where he's feasible and usable like if og's healthy and you've got og bogey and mitch in the second unit i i think we survived that just fine like i, I don't think there's any problems he just better produce that's all i'm saying because if he's not scoring he's not producing any he doesn't do anything so if he yeah, that true. that that that's really the thing and that's why i say he's the most but you know i think precious mm -hmm. could be in danger too because you know if if you've got a uh, randall back he's going to take up most of your minutes at the four and then josh hart's probably going to play backup minutes at the four and so where does that leave room for achua i don't think that it does and achua was great against toronto last night he was like 19 and 12 and like but even his minutes last night were under uh, you know weren't that many. I don't know exactly what it was. Right. And Mitch so, was the first big off the um bench last night over um you know over over Chua. This is what I'll say about the playoffs. We can't underestimate the need for shooting and scoring in the playoffs. Queens I think we're tripling down on the defense and we want rotations with with Mitch and 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 precious and OG and you we got and OG thank goodness can hit shots our defense has to be good but we our offense needs to be better the way the offenses are in the nba you cannot hold them down consistently you might have a game where you can hold them i don't know 98 points but in a series i don't think you're going to be able to hold any of these teams to 98 points for an entire series um, maybe in the first round because you're not playing, you know, there's some not so good teams. But as you move on, so I, I just I'm making that point is I need Bogey to get it together. I need him to to get some minutes in the playoffs for 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 shooting. I mean, we don't know what Randall we're going to get. We don't even know how many games he's going to play in the playoffs. The shoulder can pop out. He can get hurt, it, you know. It can appear it could be too much for him. We don't know what he's getting from him. Hart is not a scorer. He can shoot, but he's not a shooter. He can get you baskets, but he's not a scorer. You know what I mean? McBride is scoring very well for us right now. But it will that translate into the playoffs? We shall see. So I feel like our defense is good enough. We got enough players that can play defense. <laughs> How are we going to get Brunson help in the playoffs? If he doesn't have offensive help in the playoffs, the Knicks are going home. Queen, I, you know, and I was going to say something along that line. I think between Burks and Bogdanovich, I think one of them is going to get a lot of playing time. Who, whichever one of them could come through with the scoring. And I, I have a feeling it's, it's, it's Bojan. It's probably going to get minutes in the playoffs. Because you got to remember, Tibbs, he likes guys who are experienced. He likes guys who's been there like several times. And those guys have been through the playoffs. He he probably he's he's gonna give him some minute unless they don't produce at all, like they're like complete, like completely atrocious. Like he's he's gonna pull them out, but otherwise, they're gonna get their shot. They're gonna get their shot. And those guys are shooters, they're professional players. Listen, you give Bogdanovich enough looks, man, he's gonna start knocking them down. If I had if if I had to put money, if I had to choose between Burks and Bojan over who would get time, not who I would choose, but who I think Tibbs would choose between those two, I think he would choose Burks, even though Burks is not shooting particularly well. I don't see Bojan as a Tibbs type of player. 
we was we we were we were we had like five people and he was still players and he was still only getting less than 20 minutes when we were hurting. So I don't I I I I would pick him. I want him to have minutes in the playoffs and just put a defensive uh, adequate defensive team around him. That's my preference. I don't think Bo- Bogey I would be surprised if he was in the rotation. You know. I want him to be, but I would be I would be surprised if he was in the rotation. I think if he had to choose I, he would roll Burks out. Well, from what Tibbs has said, at least from what I can remember, I think we're going to have two starters on the floor pretty much at all times. And I think he's going to stagger his rotations so that he has at least two starters on the floor at a minimum. And if that's the case, I think you may see that bench even shorten up and we may only play eight guys. And possibly nine, but I think they're going to be two starters on the floor at all times. And then I think you're going to have, if everybody's healthy, this is obviously the equation changes a little bit with, if, 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 if the, you know, the lineup isn't whole, but if you have Randall back and you have, uh, and, and, and you have OG back, I think that, that Mitch is getting bench minutes. Hart is getting bench minutes and, uh, and, and, uh, Who's the other guy? Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm missing somebody. Um, um, McBride. 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 McBride will be the other guy. I think those are the three guys. And I don't think – I don't know that – I think he's going to play a lot of lineups with at least two of those starters in there so he can kind of keep that at eight. He might add in a ninth guy. if, But if, if Bogey and Burks are giving us performances like they have been, I don't know what those two can do over the last ten games. That's really going to solidify them where Tibbs is going to be like, okay, I'm comfortable. And and Burks' problem right now is he's not healthy. But even when he has been healthy, I think most of us, if they, if we had our choice with how they've played since they've come to the Knicks, we'd rather see Bo- Bogey on the court than Burks. And so I think that both of them have, have performed so poorly and Deuce has performed so well that I think Deuce is going to be there. I think Mitch is going to be there. I think Hart is definitely going to play a bunch of minutes. But I could – rotations sh- shrink in the playoffs. I could see eight, eight and a half, you know, I, maybe one of them gets in for like four or five minutes in the first half. But I could see him him tightening that rotation up and I'd not be – I would not be shocked if that's what happens. Let's just put it that way. And I know Adjay's telling me 10, but I don't believe it. <laughs> and, I, and I will also say we'll this. If a player is consistently not playing well, they're going to be pulled out of the rotation. Um, we we've seen that um, last year as well, where Grimes minutes went down quickly. Minutes went down before before even before he got hurt. Um, if you're not playing well, I'm not going to say one game, but if it looks like it's an overwhelming um, series for you, I can see your men a, a player's minutes drip. Um, dwindling. And they have a 30 game sample size with Bogey and at least 20 25 with Burks. You know, between the time that they got here and the time of the playoffs, 25 games is how long it takes Tibbs to make his decision on you typically. And so I think they're both and maybe talk me out of it if I'm wrong. I'm willing to listen. But I think both of those two are teetering on the on the on the brink of being out of the rotation entirely and 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 even more so than Precious. And I think Precious presents problems of his own just because he's as you said he's not really a scorer but you could put lineups out there where you have him out there with enough scorers where you know he and OG especially are so switchable on defense I you know I I could definitely see him you know playing playing more minutes than the other two even though he's not a scorer and and this team admittedly needs scoring but you know we just haven't seen it from Bogey and Burks thus far and they're running out of time to show it yeah, we we shall see um, in in the playoffs. It's it's just a different it's it's just a different game. Um, I agree. I do think they'll start out. The point I'm trying to make about all I'm saying is who's in the initial nine man rotation may not stay in that rotation throughout the um, playoffs. Um, I think things are liable to change if it seems like a player is overwhelmed by the experience. 
I could see their minutes dwindling and them hardly playing at all um, because we saw it last, um, you know, we saw it last year. Who are you really, other than McBride, who are you really worried about being overwhelmed come the postseason? Because I'm not worried about Hartenstein. I'm not worried about any of our starters, like when healthy. And I'm not really worried about Josh Hart. And I'm not really worried about Mitchell Robinson, especially in backup minutes. So, uh, you know what I mean? So Deuce would be the only guy I would kind of be, maybe Precious. Those would be the two guys that I would kind of be like. Well, I would say this. It doesn't necessarily, guys not performing consistently, whether that's because you're overwhelmed or whether that's because you're not um, hitting shots or because you're not playing, whatever the reason is. If somebody is consistently not playing well, I can see their minutes um, dwindling. Listen, um, Grimes went out last season. And that first, was it Cleveland? Didn't play that well. Hart played so well in his place that he started like two, three games in the Miami series before Tibbs said, okay, let me, let me go back to McBride. So that's both the point I'm I'm saying is that things can turn quickly, whether it's because you're overwhelmed or you're not hitting your shots for whatever the reason is, whoever's in that starting nine is not like stamped in like that's that's going to be the rotation throughout the playoffs. It can change. That's all I'm. I guess that's a better way of saying it. Yeah, it, it can change. I, I want to get with you. two comments um, here. Um, thought okay. It's more to the game of basketball than scoring. Knicks one hundred a GM. We understand that. Defense is important. Rebounding is important. Everything, all of it, is important. All I'm saying is, in today's NBA. You better be able to put the ball in the basket at a high level. That's all I'm saying. And I don't think we really can put a bad rebounding team on the court or a bad, Mm -hmm. even a bad defensive team on the court, really, unless we're just playing. Like, I don't see a scenario where we're just playing like Brunson, Burks, Bogey, you know, with Precious at the fight. Like, he's not going to get crazy like that just because of, who he is as a coach. And we have so Josh Hart is the best rebounding guard in the league. Mitchell Robinson is a terrific rebounder. Julius Randle, when healthy, is a terrific rebounder. Uh, you know, we, 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 we have – our guards are good rebounders. So we have – I don't think we're going to put a bad rebounding team on the floor. That's what I'm saying. So and, I, and, and we've shown even without OG for long strength stretches of time, we've shown we can be a top level defense, even in the second unit. Right. And so we're not going to have like these civ defenses on the floor in the playoffs. But the point I think that queen is trying to make is what was our deficiency last year in the playoffs? It wasn't that we were giving up 105 points per game to Miami. I think they scored a hundred, maybe once the entire series. Our problem was we weren't scoring a hundred. And so We've got to find a way, uh, whether that be Randall, whether that be DiVincenzo, who's done an amazing job in the with the with the role of the second fiddle. But again, come the playoffs, defenses are going to be keying on DiVincenzo more. They've seen this now. You know, is he going to be able to keep up the the shot creation, the five of twelve from three? Is he going to be able to put? Is he going to get that many attempts in the playoffs? Is he going to be able to knock him down with the same level of efficiency in the playoffs? We don't know these things yet, but we. He, we need that extra offense to come from somewhere. With OG's elbow, we don't know how much we can depend on him as a corner three-point shooter. With Randall's shoulder, we don't know if we're getting 25 point per game Randall or if we're getting 17 point a game Randall like we got in last year's postseason. So, uh, and and we've seen we've seen Brunson's brilliance, but we need as. Queen said in these last 10 games, we need someone else to step up consistently and provide that that s- secondary and that tertiary scoring that you know that you can rely upon. And that's got to come from somewhere. We hope that it comes from Randall if he's healthy. But if not, 
we can't just we, we've got to have other ways to, to manufacture that, whether that be Boyan stepping up or Burke stepping up. And those two guys have shown in the past that they've been able to fill that role. Right. We've seen Burks go on 18 point fourth quarter runs by himself. Not this year, but I mean, right. in his last run with the Knicks, I mean, in his first stint with the Knicks, we saw him win games for us in the fourth quarter just because he was, you know, he was that good on offense. Boyan has the potential to be a guy who's just a walking bucket. And if you have enough protection for him defensively, and I think I just made the argument that we have lineups where we can definitely do that, then yeah, we're going to need him to have some nights. Even It may not be every night, but we maybe, you know, it's a seven-game series. You may need him twice to have a quarter where he gets 14, 16 points in that quarter just to carry the offensive load for Brunson and give Brunson kind of a break where he can come back and be the closer because we know we got the closer. Right. But we need someone to fill in those gaps. Right. And that's what Queen's trying to say. Right. She's not trying to say that defense isn't important and rebound. She was yeah. a coach. She understands that all those things are part of the recipe to winning. No, no doubt. Nick Yak, we are moving the ball on offense, 30 plus assists, shooting threes right now at such a high level. What's the problem with our offense? The problem with our offense is that it stalls whenever Brunson is not in the game. That's one of the problems with our offense. The other another problem with our offense is in the playoffs, if Randall is not back, they're going to be able to, and everybody else is not shooting lights out. I just don't think Brunson is going to be enough. And and listen, what McBride is doing, what what um Hart is doing, what um, OG may do. There's somebody else. I, I Devo. I just don't think it's going to be enough in the playoffs. Um, you don't get to play the Toronto Raptors defense in the playoffs. Yeah. Where you just, it's, it's not just a slot machine where you just ching, ching, ching. Like right. er, everybody can play, except maybe the Pacers, everybody can play some defense in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, I don't know. Do you guys think I'm overstating the offensive side? Like I appreciate the defense and, I, and we need it. I, I feel like our defense is good enough to, to hold teams, to get stops and things like that. But I am super concerned about our offense. Like, when I watch the games, I'm like, oh, we who's going to score in the Who's going to score in the playoffs? Who's going to help Brunson in the playoffs? Will this translate? Like, it is the offense um, that has me nervous might well, be a little you look at certain teams. You look at teams like Boston and Milwaukee especially – Boston is going to put pressure on you for 48 minutes because they can score at every, like they just have scorers all over the floor. And Milwaukee's kind of that way too. They just, they score, they score, they score. And they, they you know, they, they have guys like Portis and, and, and Lopez. And so, uh, you know, I, I think that, that it, I think it's a concern for sure. Um, you know, and and as you said, the the numbers don't lie. We are the worst team in the NBA offensively when Brunson sits, and you know you can't play Brunson forty eight minutes every day for a seven game series. I don't think so. You've got to you've got to figure out some way to to bridge the gap. I just figured out I could take how to, to quickly take a screenshot. So I could keep receipts and we could talk about these things like throughout. I need video though, because because we say some things too that I would want to um keep um some receipts. We have staff uh, he keeps every receipt. We don't yeah. we just have to ask him. God, Queen, you getting that you in that receipt thing now too? For the playoffs. I think it'll be a fun show, receipts edition. Um, B baller for real, you guys are putting way too much credence in Randall's gravity. And underplaying the current team's growth and chemistry. We understand the growth and, and chemistry, B baller for real. And I'm sure you watched the playoffs, the Knicks in the playoffs last year. And I'm pretty sure you've watched the playoffs multiple years in a row. Growth is nice, chemistry is nice, but you got to have talent and you got to be able to put the ball in the basket. And I think wondering whether we have legitimate scorers, particularly without Rand, without you talking without Randall, that puts a lot of pressure 
on our offense, a lot of pressure on our offense, because you got to also keep in mind the way we're digging down in defense right now. And the playoffs teams are going to dig down to teams that didn't even play defense. They're going to dig down a little deeper um, in the playoffs as well. So, yes, I, I do feel we need Randall's gravity, but I could be, you know, that's just. I think I'm we're doing. underestimating how good Randall really is. Like Randall is a special, well, healthy Randall now. I mean, if he's not healthy, then okay. But healthy Randall is a special player, guys. Y'all are forget. Like, do y'all have amnesia of what? We're able to do it with him and Brunson on the floor. It doesn't I, matter to be baller for real. Go ahead. Like, and I don't even think, look, and if you're talking about besides OG and iHeart or OG and 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 Mitch, I don't even think he really compromises the defense as, as much as you're claiming that he does. In fact, in certain matchups, I think when if he's locked in peer pressure-wise because everybody else is, he's just fine defensively. You know, and I, we've seen that before. When he takes on the challenge, you, I've seen him give guys like Kevin Durant and Giannis, you know, fits, literally. Just play them tough when it's when he when he wants to. Now, you don't know. I'm not saying he's going to do that every possession because that's not the case. But we we have the we we have built the team to mitigate the weaknesses of Randall's at defense at the four and, and Brunson's defense at the one. That's part of the whole plan. Randall does so much for us that, like, he's such a terrific rebounder. You're completely discounting that. I mean, when when the game is on the line, he gets tough rebounds, in-traffic rebounds. And, you know, when when he and Brunson are, are going and right, that's one of the – most dynamic combinations in the league, man. The the Randall slander is serious tonight, y'all. Like, I know he hasn't played in a while, but this is a two-time All-NBA player, guys. What is going on? I think he's one of the best power forwards in the NBA. I, I'm shocked by these comments. Three times All-Star, don't forget. I, I just think we're underestimating, and we've watched it. We've underestimated that the playoffs is a step up. That's all. I, th- I think we just underestimating and feel like we can go in with this team that beat Toronto by 45 and we're going to be okay. I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I don't agree. You, me and AJ could have gone out there against Toronto and at least one of us would have dropped 20 last night. <laughs> yep. That was, e- that was a freeway. That was a freeway. They wasn't guarding anybody. I mean, so, like, I just think that McBride's having a good season. I think we're – and maybe I, if I'm if I'm drinking the Julius Kool-Aid and I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. But I think we're – y'all are way underrating who Julius Randle is as a player. And I know he hasn't done it in the postseason. Facts. I will grant you that. I will concede that fact. But we've not really seen a, a healthy Randle with a quality point guard uh, – in the playoffs. And I, I think it could be really good. And I think Randall's ready to embrace that role. I think he's glad that he doesn't have to be the closer. I think if you can get him going early, get him have first quarter Randall where he drops 15 points in the first quarter. And then, you know, he has 25 for the game and that saves rent uh, Brent Brunson for later on. Then he's fresher in the fourth quarter and you can't double team as easily. Cause guess what? You double team Brunson, then he gets the ball to Randall, and we've got shooters at the other three spots. Choose your poison, like that's dynamic. I mean, I, I I don't know. I just and the Knicks are doing awesome things on offense right now. I just think that 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 we're just undervaluing Randall right now because he's been out for a while. But remember, we have forty four wins, but we're only about three or four games over five hundred without Randall. So that means we're a bit, we even this year before, and we didn't get to play a lot with, 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 with some of these guys either. So we we're a better team when we've been a better team when Randall's been in there. And I, and I think to say otherwise is, is, is just not looking at, at it accurately. And I, I guess it's. A, Let me ask this question. Who, and, and this is also for 
speedballer for real. Who's the who's when if if they divert and they will a lot of attention to Brunson? Who are you? Who are you beyond a shadow of a doubt comfortable with that that person could be the second scorer for the Knicks consistently? Right? Or do you feel like we have a second scorer by committee? It could be one person, one game, another person, the other game. Because you know what they say: if you got two quarterbacks, you don't got you don't got a one. If we don't have a definitive second guy. This is a committee by second. You look at these other teams, they have a definitive second guy that they can count on game in and game out. Not that they won't have a bad game consistently. Who do you feel confident in on this team that this guy is going to show up game in and game out for you in the playoffs? When they when they put a lot of divert a lot of attention, well, not even divert. Put a lot done. Okay. 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 All right. Any anybody else? I, I mean, I I like Dante. I don't see him as a second scorer on the um on the team, but I but I like him. Um, I, I, we need guys that that you can throw the ball to and and be relatively confident that they're either going to score or make the right decision. Behind Brunson, you know, I, 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 I'm okay with Dante, but I don't see him as that guy. Germ Warfare Committee, okay. Me. Okay. Queen. Um, just remind, Hart, Hartenstein, a second. <laughs> and that's my guy. And that's my guy. He tro- be ball and trolling right now. <laughs> Listen, yo, y'all hit the like button, man. We have like 165 people, only 74 likes I'm seeing. Come wow. on, man. Let's get that thing to 100, man. Let's get that thing to 100. Somebody said, dude, yeah. Brunson, Randall, I, mean, I, 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 I don't even know why that's a discussion. I mean, they, listen, uh, Julius Randall. People, you got to ask the question. No, I know, I know. But I don't even want to ask. It, it's like so obvious. Like, Listen, if if you had any doubt on how good Julius Randle is, he was voted into the All Star team not by the fans who don't know nothing, by the coaches. Like, I mean, by the the NB, the greatest NBA, the greatest basketball minds in the world. Say, you know what? This guy's an All Star. If you if you had if you didn't know if you didn't see any game, believe what they told you. That this guy belongs to be on an All Star team. He's one of the best players in the league. All right. Is he and- perfect? No, but he's one of the best players in the league. I, I just can't understand how we think we going. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, shout out to Justo Eleven. Appreciate the super chat. I think Randall coming back and getting his rhythm determines if we raise the trophy this year. Dante looks like he can be a third option in good spots too. I I totally agree. And as a matter of fact, I think that's how this team was built to play around Randall and 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 Brunson, because there's not a lot of guys that can create shots on this team. Devo can do it some, OG can do it some, but who's the shot creators on this team? I think they decided we're gonna get a lot of shooters around these two guys because they 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 operate best with the ball in their hand. So let's surround them with guys who don't need the ball. And here we are. Yeah. Um Queen, I wanna address yeah. oh no, I'm sorry, not this one. I meant to highlight this one from Nick Yak. How much better could uh, have Randall played up until he got hurt. And shout out to Nick Yak. We don't know. But one thing we do know is he was playing better, more efficient ball in his career this year. And you remember he started the year like really terrible, like real horrible. But somehow he he managed to, up until the point he got hurt, to get his stats to the point where, to get his game, not just his stats, but his game, to the point where 
he was already one of the best uh, power forwards in the game, even with the bad start. I mean, he was playing horrible for like 10, 12 games. But he dominated so much, like the following, the, the next you know, 20 or so games or 25 games, that they like, you know what, this guy's an all-star. He's balling. Yeah. And, and you know what? I feel bad for him and for us. Like, just think about where we would be right now with a healthy Randall. You know, if Randall is healthy in the playoffs, our ceiling is much higher than it is right now. We already excited. Imagine if Randall was healthy and he doesn't get that opportunity to get this monkey off his back that he's not a playoff performer. Well, think back to January before Jaime Jaquez Jr. decided to go all WWE. Thanks, Miami. Um, you know, <laughs> they were 14 and two and blew the doors off of Philadelphia and Denver when those two teams were at full strength. Did we forget that? Like, they were, we were, but by, be by like Cleveland was the only team playing better than us, and they were like 15 and one during that stretch or something crazy like that. Like our offensive and defensive net rating, even with Julius, who's not the best of defenders, as, 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 as even I'll admit, we were still top 10 in defensive and offensive net rating by a long shot. And I think we were first in defensive rating with those two. So, like, y'all need to chill with this Julius hate, man. It's crazy. Like, I wonder, like, y'all were around in the Patrick Ewing era, and he got this kind of treatment, too. I don't understand it, man. Like, enjoy your best players. We're the only team that just kills our all-stars. Like, most teams celebrate him. We're like, yeah, he no good. Yeah, I, I think I think it's more about underestimate what it takes to win in the playoffs. I think we I think we might be underestimating what it's going to take, particularly this year when when the teams are really strong, you know, going in and we're and we're bunched up, you know, um, a, a team may fall into the seventh spot that was in the running for the fourth spot. You know, so. Yeah, I think we're underestimating what it's going to take. I think we're looking at how we're passing the ball around against Detroit and OKC and just extrapolating that into the playoffs that we're going to be able to do that against any team on any given night. Um, and and I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I do. Aesthetically, aesthetically the, the, the Randall ISO and the Brunson ISO is not as pretty. I, I admit, aesthetically speaking, it's not as pretty, but that's playoff basketball. Even nowadays, I mean, you know, you have to be able to score in isolation in the playoffs. In fact, that was the Celtics' downfall last year, was that Tatum and Brown didn't get it done when it mattered the most in those ISO situations. And so that's what basketball is about, and they have tons of shooters. But when it comes down to it, and and you're playing against the best teams. It's can you get a bucket, and, and how are you going to do it? And who's how out? Are you going to get a bucket, Brunson? You know, and they're going to double Brunson. And once double Brunson is doubled, how are you going to get a bucket? You know, you got to have other avenues to get a bucket. And Randall helps that. Like Brunson and Randall are a dynamic duo. They're guys who can average 26 plus together like each of them they're so good on offense and they can be and randall's not a bad passer either by the way and he's a good rebounder i know he does have his turnover problems and and those things but i'm not saying be the primary initiator which i don't i don't like that role for him and i think tibbs would give it to him on the second unit some and I, that hasn't looked great just from the numbers in my as from as far as i know but but when 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 he's on the court and and he gets it and 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 because they've doubled Brunson, they're so worried about Brunson that leaves you with four on three. You get the ball loose and you get easy buckets, and they're hard to come by in the playoffs. Right. Let me get to this super chat. Appreciate Justo, eleven. Appreciate you. Do you think the spacing can help Randall get into a groove quicker? 
Also, this front office addressed our issues in one NBA season with 11 picks still. I love us. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, will the spacing help? It, it can't hurt. I don't know about getting into a groove quicker, but he'll definitely have more space. Um, well, where's the double team going to come from? In other words, if you're playing him with iHeart, who has that little push shot medium range game, and you've got OG who can shoot in the corner, and you've got DiVincenzo who we know can shoot, where's the double coming from? Like, even on Brunson, where's the double coming from? Like, because if Brunson could just outlet it to Dante and then you're a four on three, like, I, the, I, to me, when when we're fully actualized, and we saw that in January, guys, just go back to January and look at some of those games and how we were, we were annihilating the entire NBA for an entire month because nobody could stop us on either end of the floor. This is that is how good we were, and and I'm not saying we're going to be able to get to that level again. I don't know if we will. I don't know if the health is going to be there. But the but Randall can be a big piece of this puzzle. But Just what if he's don't not write him off, Jeff? What what your percent did you think he would need to be to still help us? Oh, that's a hard question. I don't know because what is I, I think that's an impossible because like what is eighty percent like? What is 70%? In other words, is if if you're just talking about 80% of his stats, I don't know that that you know what eight, I mean? The eight I'm talking about his game. His um, game. I, I, so, I think it's, no, well, no, no, no. I'm talking about in terms of his health. If he's not a hundred percent, but he's eighty percent, how much does that help us? If he's seven, at what percentage does it just feels like we don't really need you out there. If you're only well, like 60%, we could, will my, my question is my, my thing would be this. Can he do the Julius Randall things? Can he get inside and play bully ball and get that little, you know, floater game and finish effectively at the rim and do all those things inside that we saw him do. <laughs> if he can do that stuff, then I think we're good. But if he's limited to just being a perimeter player and he can only shoot 30% from three or less, then I think that's an issue. So it's, it depends he still on would what. Be better than any other four we have, he would still be better than Precious, who's not an offensive player. And he may still even be better. Well, Hart. I mean, if you if you if you're taking both the offense and defense into account, then maybe Hart would be a little better if he, you know if he's relegated to a um, an outside player. But because I think if all he's doing is standing on the perimeter, and he's not creating that gravity. Then that he's not really being Julius Randle. In other words, that uh, Julius Randle, he's got. He's got to have enough where he's still the threat where defenses are going to pay attention to him. And if he's it, so that's the litmus test for me. Can he still punish a defense inside the arc? And if he's able to do that, whatever percentage that is, 75, 80, we know he's not going to be 100. Right. But if he's able to do those things inside the paint effectively, then then he's he's a no brainer to put out there. If he can't do those things, then I then I'm not sure what he's doing for you because. And then it's the other thing is the rebounding. How's he doing on the rebounding? And is he still pulling in, you know, his 11 boards a game, or is he at seven? You know what I mean? That those kinds of things make a difference as well. So so it depends upon like you what what I I don't really I don't really I can't really put my mind around exactly what we're being allowing him to be able to do to make that decision. You'd have to be able to see it before right. you could, before yeah. you could really make a judgment. I would think for me, even if he's playing out on the perimeter, who else do we have playing out there on the perimeter on the floor? He's better than precious because precious is not giving, giving you anything. Randall can give you at that, um, you know, at that four position. 
Um, so if he's shooting threes and he's shooting, you know, mid range shots and he's not down there banging, I still think they have to pay attention to him. I still don't think they're just going to um, lay off of him and give him open shots. He may not command a double team, but I still think that if Randall is averaging 14 points and six rebounds, um, you know, for us, and he's not a hundred percent, unless he's hurting us, I, 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 I would take it. Um, but that's that's just me. Um, Adja, your thoughts on it? On on what? On which which? which uh... Um, if Randall is not a hundred percent, about what percent would he have to be for you to say he could still help us, or nah, he probably shouldn't play? Man, I, I would I would I would rather see him at a hundred percent because because he's such a physical player. We would because, all like that actually. because because he <laughs> used well. That's my answer. I want I want him to be a hundred percent, and I don't want you know you know it th- things get tougher in the playoffs. And now you know since the All Star break, they letting those guys play. They letting like a lot of, a lot of what they used to call fouls. They letting them you know they letting them bang up a little bit. That doesn't play well into into the situation with Julius Randle. So if he's not a hundred percent, don't play him. Yeah, no, nah, I just let him heal because you know it's not like, yeah. I mean, what do you do? Take a chance and lose him for real, or let him sit out another couple of games? I, I, I would. No, 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 no. What we're saying is, if they say basically you're not going to hurt you, like nobody's putting a player's career at jeopardy. You can't hurt yourself anymore, but you're not going to get until the a hundred percent until over the summer. The best you can hope for right now is seventy five percent, eighty. I'm just saying this is what the medical doctors is telling I, me. I, I'd have to see if he's draw if he's drawing defenders if he if he's you know if, if if he's drawing the defense and he's allowing uh you you know the team to to do what they normally do when he's there you know to me which means you know given given Divincenzo those open shots giving Jalen Brunson a little bit a little bit more space if he's doing that. I would take him at whatever percentage it is that other teams would think that they need to guard him out. But if he's if he's not being aggressive and they feel they don't need to guard him, I, I don't need him out there because it's it, you know it's going to be detrimental to the team. I think okay. so. And and you know, I think so. The next we we play San Antonio OKC in Miami. Even if it's right now, I'm not bringing him until after Miami game. Cause I'm not bringing him here. Can play, you know. Somebody going down when we play. Somebody always go down. When we play Miami, so I'm not bringing Julius Randle. Let it be him again. IJ would sit everybody. He he would play Jacob Toppin oh, yeah. 45 minutes in that Miami. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I swear Miami do it on purpose. There's no doubt about it. And they play. They play like they don't know what's going on. Oh, what I do. Wow. All right. We, let me let me just let me just take my screenshot. And then I gotta I gotta put him in an envelope <laughs> with the date and what the we were staff talking of, about. The staff of Dawn envelope. <laughs> and what That's we were guy. he keep those receipts. He knows what I said back in nineteen ninety eight, and I wasn't even here on the show at that time. But he knows. All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we get out of here? I got a plane. I got a plane ride in in the um morning. Oh, let me ask this before we leave about Monty Williams' comment about the Knicks shooting the threes or whatever. Do you think you know? Obviously, in high school, sometimes in college, if you're beating a team, you take out your best players. The mercy rule. You don't really want to embarrass them or, or what have you. Do you think that should hold in the NBA? And do you think, even if you think it should hold, what about if you have a player that's on the verge of a record? Is that a good enough reason to keep your team in there to ensure that they get it on an NBA level? Your thoughts on that? We'll start with Ajay and and then Jeff. 
<clears throat> not too long because I, I got to get out of here. We no, I don't think that should hold. Listen, if you're if you're up by twenty and there's five seconds left, yeah, you know, dribble it out. All right, don't don't shoot a three and try to get cute like like a Jay Crowder did, and that's why Alfred Payton had to smack him. I remember that, and I was very happy about that. <laughs> um, yeah, but, <laughs> but no. So I mean, what do you do? So yesterday, um, the the game, the Knicks scored eighty points in the first half, right? So what do you do? You 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 don't continue to score because you you want to be. I mean, I I don't understand what. But Bunch keeping said. your best players in, I guess, is what he was referring. To. I yeah, you got to keep your best players in <laughs> until until you feel comfortable that you listen. You got to keep your rotation. You play the game regardless of what the score is. You play tight defense, if, whether you're leading by two or by fifty. That's how you play the game. That's how you have to play the game. You're a professional basketball player. That's what you got to do. So I don't know. He, you know, Monty William, all in his feelings, like he really hate the Knicks, the team who drafted him, by the way. <laughs> he, 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 he all he all tick, ticking it all personal or whatever, Pat Stanning, whatever. Like, whatever it is, man, get your guys to play better defense. You know, how about you You tell your guys, listen, you know, stick on them. Don't let them, don't let them get those shots off. You know what I'm saying? That that's how you get your young guys to play better, not by sitting over there complaining, talking about oh where the New York media at now. No, that's not. We don't care about that, bro. Like on the court, we're here to play. If you know, five minutes to go, we up by fifty. We're playing tight defense. As if it was, <laughs> you know that that's that's what we do. That's how the game is played. Get with it, Monty. Right, and I agree with Nick. Yeah, he would help his players get a record. Yeah, he would. You know, I mean, like, as a matter of fact, he, he did. He did help his players get the record for most for most loss in a row. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I, I hear that Knicks 100 a GM. I don't know if that. I don't know if that that. Well, that's the question. Does that hold on an NBA level? That's the question. Um, I, I get it. You know, in in junior high school, bitty basketball. You know, but it's the NBA. You know, you could have ran double teams. You could have did. You know, he didn't run double teams. He didn't. It was all single coverage. So mad single coverage. Not. Right. I mean, it, it so, wasn't even just. It's not like they were draped all right. over him and like they they were leaving Divincenzo to go uh, to go make sure that Josh Hart didn't get the like. No. You stay on DiVincenzo and you let Hart shoot. Like, how does your team not know that you leave Hart open as the shooter? Like, but get out of here with that mess. Let me tell you, right. listen, but, this mm -hmm. is the NBA, right? Players get paid millions of dollars to play. People pay big money to come see those guys play. TV, advertisers, they pay a lot of money to see those guys play. If they up by 50, they want to see those guys play. They want, they want their money's worth. OK, I don't care what Monty Williams is saying. He he's he not making any sense. This is the NBA. This is a business. There's big money involved. You pay. You want to see those guys play regardless of what the score is. You got to see them play. But this is my thing. Basically, Tibbs, I need you to stop instead of doing everything you can on your end. I, he, he didn't even do everything he could on his end. He did not send a double team. But I, I need it's to stop. Evan Fournier. Like, wow. if that's and it was your plan. Evan, Evan, who did a decent job, actually. Um, but you're right. He he kept Evan on him. So, like, you 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 didn't put in any effort to try to stop it from happening, and you're going to complain afterwards? Come on. And and I think if the shoe's on the other foot, if that was – if that was – I don't know if that was Jalen Duran going for the Pistons block shot record or something. He's not going to take him out of the game. He's going to do everything yeah. in his power to, you know, to, to let, and that's fine. Look, that's it, a good point in professional sports. It it's one thing if it's their amateurs, I don't even think in college these days, cause it's like, but if it's high school ball, okay, I get it. But, but look, get out of your feelings, bro. This is a professional game. You don't like it? Stop him. Like, play defense. Get the ball out of his hands. Like, we ran one basic play to get him that last three, and then we sat him down. And with, like, five minutes left, like, <laughs> like 
like, how soon do you want want us to to put take the foot off the gas? I mean, he the Celtics the blew a thirty point lead the other night. Oh, so he, he did. And, and shout out to our friends who pointed out when he when he coached Phoenix, they used to run up the score. When they, when they're blowing out teams, I didn't I didn't see him sit a uh, Devin Booker or Chris Paul. Everybody was playing. He did it back then. Now it's a problem because because he's getting because because he's getting stomped. Come on, man. Right. Um. Shout out to Paris Duggar. A funny thing has happened along the way. People we couldn't live without in the past are not around, and it turns out we've gotten better and better. Paris Duggar, I appreciate you. But stop the madness. Stop <laughs> the madness. Stop the madness. <laughs> you know we we we. We were four and eight in in February. We turned it around in March. What were we? Thirteen and two. Something March, like that. Yeah, we had a great month. Yeah. Um. And two. Yeah, we're thirteen and two. But you're not going to tell me cryptically that we're a better team without Randall and OG. It's just you. You're not going to um convince me of that. And then when we go into the playoffs. And the Knicks lose a few games. Do not come on this channel complaining about Thibodeau and 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 the um and this and that. When the reality is, if we don't get Randall and OG back, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. At some point, it's going to be a wrap. And don't come here complaining about what we should have done to help win if we don't have OG or if we don't have Randall. I don't want to hear it. And I'm gonna be here for. All the smoke. You took a screenshot. A screenshot of that one, Queen. No, okay. Let me take. <laughs> let me take a screenshot of that. I mean, are people watching the play? Boston has. I'm not going to even use Boston. Let's not even use um, Boston. Milwaukee. Say what you want. We, they got two legitimate bucket getters on that team. Boston has two legitimate bucket getters um, on 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 that team. Um, Cleveland, Ooh, when they're healthy, two legitimate bucket getters. Cleveland has two. The, was it Philly you were talking about? When healthy yeah. has um, has two, but we feel we're going to be just as good going in with one. I, I yeah, I don't I, I don't see it. I don't. I mean, okay. We'll we'll see. Let me tell you, if it happens, I'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> they say we we winning without Randall, but we were winning with Randall. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. Anyway, any 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 last words? Uh, yeah, just. Uh... Shout out to Ajay. It's always a pleasure, bro. You're you're awesome. I love your opinion. Queen, you're the hostess with the Moses. Have a great trip. Be safe. Be careful. Have fun. Hope to get you see get to see a win when you go to that Nick game. Enjoy the beach and and the whole nine yards and 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 and, and the chat. You guys were on fire tonight. I don't know what Randall did. I don't know if he did something to your sister or your mama, but you know, <laughs> just chill on the Randall hate guys. Just give him a chance to get back and healthy and 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 be himself before we we just run him out of town on a rail. I mean, he there are not very many Nick players who made three All Star games in my lifetime. Like. Since I've been watching ball, it doesn't happen that often. The list isn't that long, and he's on it. So let's let's celebrate him and not like pour, pour gasoline on the fire of 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 his of his uh, funeral pyre here. But because he's he's been out for you know se several months, like the guy is still a vital part of this team going forward for where we want to go. Because everybody wants a championship. And he he gives you he gives you the best chance to win, in my opinion. Yeah. And yeah. maybe I'm crazy, and maybe I've seen it different. But to yeah. me, any lineup that has him on the floor gives you a better chance to win. Listen, with other guys, we're excited about getting Mitchell Robinson back, even if he plays 15 minutes. Even if he only plays 15 minutes, we're excited that he's going to be able to help us. Every little bit counts. 
but we can do it with, but we can do it without Randall. We don't need him. Wow. Any um Queen, um when you go to the game in Miami, you are wearing the Knicks uh, some Knicks gear, right? Don't I am I'm, I'm I'm wearing some Knicks gear. Don't, don't go in there and play clothes now. Don't punk out, all right? You got to go on the show. Go <laughs> represent. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm looking forward to my. T- I, so I'm going on. I'll be on a cruise from Friday to Monday. So I don't even know. It's hit or miss when you go to the sports bar on the cruise, whether they're going to be playing the Nick game. So I may not see the Friday game. I may not see the Sunday game. You got Wi-Fi. You can follow it. I don't know if they have Wi-Fi on the ship. They do have not. Wi-Fi on the ships, but it's not. It's not great. Friday. Yeah. Like being able to stream an entire game. I would be I would be lucky. Um I'm back on land Monday, but they don't play until am I right? They after Sunday, they don't play again until um Tuesday. So I'll be Check in the, the grid out that day. Yeah, that's I'll be, right. They play I'll Tuesday. Be in the for that one. They play in Miami on Tuesday. Queen, listen, we had 93 likes. Don't forget to hit the like on your way out. Seven more people to get to that 100. And don't forget to buy the queen a cup of coffee before she goes on vacation. That's right. Oh, my cruise. Exactly. Um, be sure to, to, to tune into the Queen's Court. Lady and the Chef is going to be hosting the Queen's Court on Monday. Um, so hopefully, Jeff, you can make it. Um, and- if it's a normal time, I think I'll be. I mean, we don't play on Monday, so I should be all right. Yes. I should Just, be there. To- Give her some support if you guys can. Sure, if I can. And um I'm and, on it. let's put it that way. Yeah. And those show up in the um in the chat for her. She'll be fine. I know she's gonna do um yeah, a, she's a, a superstar. A, we don't worry about her, yeah. but we want to support her anyway. And and I'll be in the hotel, so I might be tuned in. I just don't want to commit to hosting the show. But if if I'm in the hotel, I don't know if I'm gonna pop on. I might call. I I don't I don't know if I'm gonna pop in. on. I think I'll just I'll just listen and be in the chat um, Monday. She'll be throwing tomatoes at me in the chat. Yeah, exactly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and shout out to Staffa, B Bola for real, the X Productions, Knicks One Hundred, JJ always rocking um, with us. Who, shout uh, out to Shuttle who's doing a show. John, Jonathan Green. Yes, yeah, shout out to DJ Shuttle. Comes on Instagram live Mondays at 8 p.m. and then on 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 Fridays at 108. So 8 p.m. as well. So check him out, DJ Shuttle, doing his um, you know, doing his thing. Cody, I appreciate you. I'm not gonna get to everybody. Nick Yak, disagree or not disagree? I appreciate this community. Coach Alawai, Shy Powell. I appreciate all of you. Paris Duggar for the super chat. Deuce, and Deuce grandfather was in the house. <laughs> Wiz. That's, that's 11. <laughs> Wiz, he said grandfather. His grandfather was in the house. Wow. That's what he wow, said. He Wiz. said Deuce is my grandson. Oh, that's what he said? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought right. you just said. Okay. Am I right, Wiz? I don't know if Wiz is still on. Oh, he's not the 89-year-old in the chat, though, is he? No, nah, that's uh, <laughs> that's, mega. that's mega. Yeah, that's mega. <laughs> that's my guy, mega. <laughs> Shout out to mega. Until next time, next week the Knicks play Thursday and Friday, so we will probably go Saturday. Keep your notifications. Keep your on. notifications um, on. I'll be back Wednesday, but I'm not gonna come in that morning. I gotta work in the evening and then try to do a show. So, um, probably Saturday if we if we can. Until we can go. Time family. Sister, you want of a kind. Yes. Sister, it's time you shine. Don't talk. Where you at? Where you at?